Josh Heupel surprised a lot of people with the success that he saw last year. And obviously there's still plenty of room for him to grow and plenty of room for him for his program to grow. But I feel like he's taking steps in the right direction. Now, obviously, they're, all right, it's still too early to tell what they're going to do. But this is going to be a team in 2022 that is extremely explosive, has plenty of talent on defense. And there's a lot of people who believe that they can be the surprise team in the East. Now, obviously, I don't know if anybody puts them outside of Tennessee, if they put them on the level of Georgia. But if Georgia struggles a little bit early on with the number of talented players they have to replace and Tennessee is firing on all cylinders right off the bat, you're looking at, even just in this top 10 list, a team that is going to make a statement, and it it feels like they're ready for that spotlight. You can't start a list with Tennessee without talking about Hendon Hooker. It was the great fit in Josh Heupel's system. Obviously, they started with Joe Milton, and that didn't work out, and Hendon Hooker stepped right in and proved to be exactly what Dylan Gabriel was for Heupel at UCF. This is a guy who, you know, maybe doesn't have the strongest arm, so he's a little bit different than Gabriel, but he made accurate throws. 68% completion percentage last year. He threw 31 touchdowns, and he took care of the football with just three interceptions. He also rushed for 616 yards and five touchdowns on the ground. This is a quarterback that is going to compete for the Heisman Trophy, someone that everybody believes can be one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. And it's easy to see why. You look at the offense that they run. I just did a breakdown of that offense. It's almost like a cheat code offense. It's kind of that we're really just going to attack half the field and spread you out so far that you have to declare what you're going to do. And we're going to attack that based off what you show. And Hendon Hooker now returns. It contemplated going to the NFL. And he comes back. And that's really exciting if you're a Tennessee fan. That's something that you should really be scared of if you're an opposing team outside of, you know, maybe Georgia or Alabama. But this is a team that I think is headed in the right direction under Josh Heupel. Uh, he's still got some doubt, doubtful people that he needs to prove wrong, but it's going to be something that, if he does, makes this team really exciting and really terrifying. When you flip over to the defensive side of the ball, they didn't get as much attention as the offense did last year, but Jeremy Banks at 128 tackles and 11 and a half tackles for loss deserved more credit than he got. I think that he got overlooked because everybody was just excited about the offense. They were really pumped about what the offense was doing, the explosive plays. And obviously, when you play in the SEC, you're going to face a ton of talent, and stopping teams is going to be tough. It, It just is. There's no doubt about that. But Jeremy Banks is a playmaker. I'm excited to see what he can do now that he has that full year of experience under his belt and one that was really positive. I think that he's a natural playmaker, and there are a ton of talent around him, a ton of talented players that can make plays as well, and that's going to be huge for a team that is looking to take a step forward. It's not going to be the offense that needs to take a step. It's the defense, and if they're able to do that and support this offense that's going to put up points in a hurry, then Tennessee's in business. I think a lot of people were, uh, you know, in awe of Vilas Jones, but Cedric Tillman led the team in receiving last year, and he's back. He almost averaged 17 yards per catch, had over a thousand yards with 12 touchdowns. This is a guy that you need to pay attention to. He fits really well in Josh Heupel's system, and it's easy to see why. He knows what teams are going to do. He understands the matchups that he's going to get, and like I said, with that offense that they run, he's able to break down what he sees in front of him. He's able to break down the looks that he gets, and that's why he was so successful. He can manipulate a defense. He knows how to beat his man, and Hennon Hooker is going to look his way, especially with Jones off to the NFL. Speaking of the NFL, Darnell Wright is probably headed that way. This is a guy who I think a lot of people were expecting Wanya Morris to be that guy, and then Morris leaves for Oklahoma, which leaves Darnell Wright as when he came into Tennessee as a freshman, people expected him to be a star right away. Took a little bit of time, but I, he's really come into his own. He's really developed well. He has grown as a pass protector. And keeping Hendon Hooker upright, while it doesn't take a lot uh, in terms of t- amount of time that you have to protect for, Darnell Wright is really good. He's got great length. He has great balance. And I, I, it's going to be really fun to see him because he's going to face a lot of quality competition. And it's really going to help his draft stock if he has a successful season. One of the more underrated players on Tennessee is Jabari Small. The running back had almost 800 yards last year with nine touchdowns. And he's really tough to take down. I think that a lot of people just assume because he's not a bigger back that it's going to be easy for him to go down. You just got to get a good hit on him. But he is a lot better than people realize. And if the one thing that this offense will need to do 
is continuing running the football in a consistent and efficient basis. And, and when you're looking at Jabari Small, I think that he is the guy that is going to do that. Now, obviously, someone behind him needs to step up now that Ty and Evans is gone. But this is a team that you should be excited about. The offense it has plenty of playmakers. It just comes down to utilizing them the right way and getting them in positions to do that. Another player to watch, Aaron Beasley on, at linebacker. 84 tackles and 7.5 and tackles for loss. A lot of people focused on Jeremy Banks, but Aaron Beasley is another linebacker that you need to pay attention to. This front seven, I think, is going to be very exciting. The secondary has a lot of potential, too. But when you're looking at a defense that could step up, with the experience that Tennessee has returning, there's no reason to believe that they can't be that team. Tyler Barron on the edge, I think, has the potential to be an all-SEC type talent. Seven tackles for loss and four sacks. Plays kind of that hybrid defensive end, linebacker role, so more of like that edge position. That's going to be really fun. I, I think that this defensive line has, like I said, a ton of potential. I keep talking about that front seven, and it's really going to come down to them because, like I said, when you pay when you play the amount of talent that an SEC team faces, the the ability to take away things on, on the offense from the front seven, if you're able to disrupt with your front seven, it makes your secondary look a lot better. Now, like I said, they have a lot of talent in the secondary so they should be just fine. But if you're able to take even more of a step by having your front seven disrupt everything, that's just going to make your secondary even better. That makes your defense as a whole that much better as well. One of those guys I mentioned in the secondary is safety Jalen McCullough. 49 tackles, 3.5 tackles for loss, 5 passes defended, 3 interceptions. The guy does a little bit of everything. And I mentioned the front seven needs to take a step forward. But also, there's some responsibility on the secondary to step up because it doesn't matter how good you are in, in your front seven. If you see an offense like Tennessee, a lot of teams run these explosive plays where you're going to be getting two, three seconds to get to the quarterback. Sometimes that's not enough. It comes down to your secondary. What can they do to slow teams down? What can they do to take away those quick passes or to be able to get in passing lanes that make life very difficult for the opposition? Jalen McCullough is one of those guys that is going to play a big role in that, and it's going to be fun to see what Tennessee can do when their secondary is firing just as well as the front seven. Joining him in the secondary is Trayvon Flowers, another playmaker who does a little bit of everything for this Volunteers defense. You'd like to see the 82 tackles probably go down a little bit more unless they're playing them near the line of scrimmage more, but you'd like to see your safety not have to do so much work. Again, that comes down to the front seven being disruptive, but at the same time, if you need your guy to make a play, you at least know that you're you have some comfort knowing that your safeties can make plays. And again, if your safety is making a lot of your plays, that means that guys are getting past the line of scrimmage, past your front seven, and you've got, you got a lot of cleanup duty. And I think that Trayvon Flowers is more than capable, but I also think that Tennessee would like to see him more on the back end and with less tackles and maybe more passes defended. A player that I'm really excited to see in Josh Heupel's offense, again, is Jalen Hyatt. I think that he will take a step forward with Vilas Jones gone. He has a great speed that can be utilized a little bit more, and that's something that could make him an even more dangerous threat. You know, you look at Cedric Tillman is going to get a lot of attention, and Jalen Hyatt has the experience. He knows the offense, and that's really big for an offense that hopes that he can take a step forward. And you look at what Josh Heupel can do, he can be a very multiple in his looks, he can be very, very diverse in getting his playmakers the football, and Jalen Hyatt gives him another weapon. J Josh Heupel comes into a phenomenal situation in Tennessee, and it just really just comes down to him being able to take them uh, in the right direction. I think there were some doubts about him at UCF, and some of those doubts remain at Tennessee, but he's at least taking the first step in the right direction. This is a team that is a, could be a surprise team in the SEC, one that is definitely a dark horse to win the East, but if everything goes right and they play their cards correctly and they take a step forward on both sides of the ball, this is going to be a team that's very dangerous and can do what they're trying to do in 2022.